Hey everybody, Unstable Gamer here, and welcome back to another Marvel Strike Force video. In this video, we're going to be diving into first impressions of Alliance War, go over some of the rules and some tips, and some things that uh, maybe we forgot <laughs> before we went in and dove into this Alliance War. It's the newest update, it just came out, and I'll tell you, I'm excited for it. I think it's cool so far, but first, before we jump into that, if you're just now finding this channel and you want to stay up to date with this and other games, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right, and welcome back. So we're just gonna go over Alliance War really quick. If you're new to the game, then this will give you just a quick little overview of Alliance War. And uh, we're gonna go over the UI here. We're gonna go and take a look at my defenses, and I'm gonna attack a couple of rooms as well. So first, just going into the rules, I thought this was a good reminder of how Alliance Wars work. You're pitted up against another alliance. And from what I'm hearing, it's based on total collection power, and then after that, it's gonna go off kind of a win-loss thing. I think that's a good way to do it. If that's the way that they're doing it, I think that I think that's good. It kind of keeps things even. But I'm not gonna go through all the rules here. There are some tips that I do wanna point out, though, like right here, some rooms are worth more points than others, right? So strategically, so you have the bridge and the reactor that are worth more than all the other rooms, 100 and 200 points. You're gonna to wanna to strategically place those and defend those so that they are the hardest to get. All right, the alliance with the most points wins. And then we're gonna scroll down a little bit here. Keep powering up your characters even if you don't use them to maximize the leaderboard points. So this right here, so the winning alliances will also get a leaderboard point bonus, which is based on a percentage of the alliance's total collection power calculated at the end of the war. So everybody that you have defending rooms in there that haven't been defeated, then there's gonna be some sort of bonus attached to that. All right, next. So if you leave an alliance during a war, then your defending characters will continue to defend the helicarrier for the duration of that war, which is good because you don't want that to screw another alliance, screw that alliance, right? When you join an alliance, then you're going to have a 24-hour cooldown. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. It's the same thing with raids. Setting up your defenses. We're going to run down here just a little bit. So this note right here, so rooms that are above, below, to the left, and to the right, those are considered your adjacent rooms. There, uh, there was a thought, or there has been a few thoughts, that the rooms that are diagonal from the room as well are adjacent, but they're not. It's above, below, to the left, and to the right. So when you take a look at those bonuses in those rooms, make sure that you get the most out of where you place those. And maybe, maybe how you place those, the, the total number of buffs, buffs total across all rooms will go up and down based on where you have those rooms. Even the most optimal spot to get the most buffs in all the rooms may not be the best move in every situation. That's where this war, that's where this game mode, I think, is is really cool because it allows for customization. Every war is going to be the same. And I mean, it, every war is going to be just a little bit different. The overall goal is going to be the same. But how you attack it, how you defend, how you strategize to win that war is going to change over time. And I think that's what's going to help keep this game fresh going forward. Also right here as well so stretch your roster further by bringing fewer than five characters into a battle if you take a look at a room and it's just filled with shield agents you may just be able to clear them out with one or two characters that way you save your roster because remember teams that are defending cannot attack and you're attacking teams you can only use them once once they're done then you got to move to the next team so in order to in order to do the most damage and stretch how far you can go then that is going to be a good strategy. It's something we also discussed um, a while ago with a few tips that we got prior to this coming out, and that is very much, very much true. All right, and then uh, also in the rooms, to just you get the points for the rooms by destroying the room completely, right? But in order to progress through war, you only need to defeat one player's characters. So you've got two slots in there. You can clear one slot and then continue to move on. But if you want the points for the room, make sure to take out that room. Now, that may be something that you do afterwards. Maybe you have a strategy of clearing down, trying to find out where the reactor is or where the bridge is so you can score the most points. And then cleanup could be destroying, destroying some of those other rooms that you didn't get to. All right, so those just a quick few points on the rules that I wanted to go over at the store. 
in the store here. So here are some characters here. I did see Carnage in here. There are quite a few orange materials in here, which is great, and purple, that you're going to be able to go ahead and purchase to help gear your guys up. Leaderboards, there's nothing here yet. However, scoring, so you get one point for each war point. And then you're ranking all the way up. If you get hit rank one, you're getting 450 orange material. That's that's awesome. That's a lot. But that's a lot of work, too. If you're rank one, you're probably one of those, you know, Uber alliances out there. All right, let's go back. And then we're going to take a look at in your participation here. This is cool, too. This is where you're going to be able to see how well your team's doing, how, how involved they are in Alliance Wars. And I'll tell you, everybody needs to be taking advantage of it because these Alliance War points... I think it's like, I think I saw like three hours. So like right here. So I got two hours and six minutes for my next one. I've got one now. I'm going to use some energy so we can go through two battles really quick and play around with that. But I think it's, I think I saw like three hours or three hours plus per point. All right. Also, remember, jump into your Blitz store and pick up your defense boost. It does take 75. So make sure you grab that every single day. And then also pick up some war credits out of the Blitz store as well. That is in there. I've noticed it's in there daily. Definitely want to make sure that you take advantage of that. All right. Unfortunately, I am down a few points on this, but we are going to, we're going to make this up. I guarantee you. We got 13 hours left to do it. Let's go ahead and jump into the battle. And we're going to go ahead and look at my defenses first. So this is how I chose to set up my room. And they, look, they drilled down, right down the center. I've got my bridge on either side here. And, uh, I mean, the bridge and the reactor on either side here. And we've, we've got these things, these things, um, these rooms protected fairly well, I believe. Here, here was my initial thought. So I wanted to bury my bridge and my reactor as far down as they could go because knowing that you can only use one team at a time to attack, you're going to have to drill down quite a ways and use quite a few teams in order to get all the way down to that reactor and to that bridge. And then fortifying the reactor and the bridge with some of the strongest teams is gonna make it more difficult for my opponent to claim that, that extra 100 and 200 points there. So that was the theory, that was my thought. We'll see how well it pounds out by the end of the war. Look at that, we're up to 400 now. That was my theory behind putting those where they are. Now these two rooms here, this is where the adjacent comes in. So what I did here is I put these rooms that give adjacent buffs directly in the middle. That way, that way you get the defense up and the defending allies uh, for the defending allies in each of these rooms. And then these two rooms here that are adjacent are giving each other the buffs. So if I go into here, right now I'm only getting the buffs from the barracks right now. But if you go into there before that room was taken out, then you're going to see you're getting benefits from this room here, which is security, and this middle room here, which was engineering. As well as the buffs going to hangar and cargo, armory and barracks, and then down into, you know, that was the mid bay that was taken out. So that was initial strategy thought, and um, we'll see how well that that goes. Now jumping over into my attacking team. Now we picked, we picked the right lane, <laughs> the right road to kind of drill down into. We're going straight for the bridge right now. It looks like we've got three, we've got three, four, five teams right now before we can clear that out and take that team out. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take out um, this last team here, as long as they're not engaged, and then I'm going to take out a team over here. So this is where my opponent, our opponent, decided to put their their rooms so far. So right now we have claimed the security room, and we have claimed the hangar right now. So that's that's pretty much it. That's Alliance where You're going back and forth. Oh, and don't forget, as far as your boosts here, you can go over into your defense here, click on a room, and then boost them up. Now it takes 75, no, well, this next one now is 100. So the first one was 75, the second one here, it looks like it's 100. So definitely take advantage of that, get those boosts, purchase them every single day out of, out of the Blitz store to help your team be more successful and defend off those invaders. So let's go ahead and jump over into here. Let's go and jump into this battle. I'm going to take this team out right here. What do we got? It is a shield team, and it's a 19K team. I've been just using the bottom of my roster and then moving up depending on where I'm going, depending on what I'm looking at. So I am going to, because I want to save my stronger characters. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and run through these here. Those guys. Boom. Go ahead and fight them off. Now, I think with the next war campaign, once this one's done and we go into the next one, I'm going to play around a little bit more with, with not putting in a full team of five. See what I can do to stretch that roster a little bit more. But just because this is the first one, I want to make sure that um, I really take care of what I need to take care of here. And do the... And, uh, I think I'd rather overkill right now and get the experience and learn about war more than, you know, go in there and lose to a team that I thought maybe I would have been able to beat pretty easily. All right, so we got that taken care of. Now, the next room is just going to be a little bit harder because I know that they defended that fairly well. All right, so that was it. Let's see what it looks like. What's the next room? Okay. All right, so let's see. All right, so I thought we... Maybe that was just going down. I thought it would show the adjacent room as well. So uh, we'll have to just get rid of this room completely. All right, so one player is done. So now let's go ahead and do this next room. Let's go ahead. I should be able to do that. Get some energy. See who I can use against the Brotherhood here. All right. So we got War Machine in there. He he's got a damage increase when in war. I intentionally saved him for an attacking team and not a defending team. That way I just have more control over that. And then him paired up with Iron Man does some uh, gets gets some additional boost there as well. So I think, I think I'm okay with this. We're going to go in there and see how we do. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get defense up. And then... Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, I'm going to focus on... Magneto over there. Uh, let's go ahead and do a heal. And then actually, let's go back here to Sabretooth and do this. Okay. Magneto. So this is where... I, this is where I, um, War Machines... Oh, no. No, it got cleared off. But that's okay. Alright, let's do this. Let's slow everybody down. work on all right let's go ahead with this take out there we go saber two see what that can do 38,000 damage very nice good and take these guys out let's go ahead do that taunt all right so we're doing all right Why not? Can't use this team again anyway, so you might as well blow all of your ultimates. Don't save them. You can't. You can't. Um, you can't save them up for the next round or anything. So that's why also Storm probably isn't a very good character for this at all, just because you can't. You can't charge her up enough. All right, so we cleared this guy out. All right, there we go. All right, so now we have six, seven, and eight. So we're going to be able to clear these two pretty easy. We don't know who is in that eighth team, but it really shouldn't be too difficult to go ahead and clear this out with some low-end teams. We've got 12 hours and 50 minutes to go, so doing too, uh, doing pretty good. We should. I mean, if things go well, then uh, after we claim that 200 points there, that's going to take us up to 610 plus the points for clearing out those teams. 
and then we can continue and then really just do some cleanup in some of these areas. Maybe after that, then it's enough just to clear out these teams, these two sides here on the flight deck and collect those points because those are half clear anyway. So just some things to think about as you're running through war. And these are just some thoughts that I was really, that really came to mind. I mean, we've had the data mines and we've talked about it in multiple videos, but until you get your hands on it, it really, there's still a lot up in the air, right? But once you get your hands on it and you get in there, you start placing the rooms and your defenses and everything, and things really start to click. And that's what I think is so, so fun about this war mode. I've been really excited about it and I'm happy with the way that it's been pulled off so far. We'll see how it continues and how it evolves down the road. But there you go, everybody. That's what I wanted to show you today. My first impressions of Alliance War, a few tips, show a little bit of gameplay. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. So let me know. And I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. Take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you next time.